journey of uh, study of Laplace transforms. Uh, we have uh, understood roughly what is Laplace transform. We know how to compute Laplace transform of certain easy functions, elementary functions. We know some properties of Laplace transforms like, uh, uh, you know, uh, if I know Laplace transform of FT, how to find Laplace transform of e power AT FT or Laplace transform of T into FT or Laplace transform of T by FT. These are some of the things which we have learned. Also, we know about inverse of a Laplace transform. That's inverse Laplace transform. So you mean a function, basically a rational algebraic function, I break it up into rational functions and find Laplace transform of each of them. Inverse Laplace is also a linear transformation. That's what we have seen. Uh, next important thing is about product of functions. This is a uh, this is called convolution. It's a new operation. Uh, normally, students do get confused when they see the convolution for the first time because it looks very unnatural. Means you can't really uh, fathom why is anybody doing this. But as with many things in your study of mathematics, you have to accept it, plot through it. Sometime in your life, you'll understand why convolution is important. So right now, I cannot tell right at the beginning why such a definition is being made. Definition of what? Definition of convolution. Convolution of two functions. What does it mean? Okay, I'll tell you. First, let's see. What do we know? If you give me two functions, I can add two functions. I know. For example, you one function uh, ft equal to t and another function g t equal to t cube. Then I know how to add them. t plus t cube. I know how to multiply them. t into t cube. I know how to subtract them, t minus t cube. I know how to divide them under special circumstances, t by t cube, where t cube is not zero. So things like that, we know how to uh, sort of mix up two functions. Or even, you know, ft is sine t and gt is, uh, sorry, ft is sine t and gt is, say, uh, cos t. Then I can, ft into gt, I know, sine t into cos t. I know ft plus gt plus or minus gt sin t plus or minus cos t. I know their division. I know their composition also. f of g of t, sin of cos of t, things like that we have seen in the past. You must have seen in the past. So these are all ways of putting two functions together. Now, what I want to tell you is there is another way of putting two functions together. All these things which we told like addition of functions, multiplication, subtraction, you know, are pretty natural. Even composition was pretty natural the way it came out. Convolution doesn't look very natural. That is why a lot of students have trouble with this understanding definition of convolution. So let's go slowly, no problem. Uh, what you see on your screen is the definition of convolution. So f star g is a new function. f is a function, g is a function, f star g is a new function. That means I must tell you what is f star g of t. Here it's, I told you the definition. f star g of t is integral of f of t minus u into g u du, integral limit from 0 to t. Why is this so important? This looks so ugly. f of t minus u into g of u du and then you integrate it, definite integral from 0, limit from 0 to t. Yeah, I can't explain to you immediately. But I'll show you some of the uh, uh, shortcuts we can get because of this uh, operation. I'll, but before that, let us see how ugly this operation is. So let us take this. I want to talk of convolution of f of t and f of t, which is t, and g of t, which is t square. Let us convolve t and t square. Like you know how to add f of t and g of t. If f of t is t and g of t is t square, f t plus g t, that is f plus g t is t plus t square. Similarly, I know how to multiply f t into g t is t into t square t cube. I know how to compose f of g of t. So t square of t, etc. etc. You can figure that out. Uh, <coughs> But this new thing I want to do, convolution, I want to convolve. Let us use this definition. So f star g of t is what I want to tell you, means I want to define this. This by definition, this is integral of f of t minus u. f of t is t, 
So f of t minus u is t minus u. So I have written that f of t minus u is t minus u. And g of t is t square. I want to write g of u. So that is u square. G of u is u square. Replace t by u, u. That's all. So f of t minus u into g of u is nothing but t minus u into u square du. Integral limit from 0 to t. Now integrate this with respect to u. u is the uh, variable which is uh, uh, we are using to integrate which means t is to be treated as a constant it's not actually a constant but we treat it as a constant under the integral sign so i'll take t out and integrate it i'll get t, uh, u square integral of u square which is u cube by 3 and here integral of u cube which is u power 4 by 4 and write the definite integral limit 0 to t and put u equal to 0 so this whole thing becomes 0 u equal to t if you put it will become t power 4 by 3 minus t power 4 by 4 which is t power 4 by 12 yeah it's all okay but the point is what i mean it doesn't look nice no ft is t gt is t square if you combine these two as a convolution you will get this ugly function 1 by 12 t power 4 the coefficient is bad power has become more horrible it's a funny kind of thing it's a weird kind of com combination of two uh, functions but it's very useful so i'm trying to explain to you what is useful about this in fact we will see uh, uh, what we need is convolution is commutative that means f star g is same as g star f uh, not difficult but i will not bother proving that we will use this sometime later uh, let me illustrate how bad this is means how bad this convolution is convolution of p and p square let us see the function f of t looks like a straight line f of t equal to t looks like this straight line it is this straight line similarly g of t equal to t square this is the curve so this is the one curve this is another curve where i am trying to convolve these two if i convolve this i will expect to get something in between but instead of that what do i get i got 1 by 12 t power 4 which looks like this it's not clear at all why is how is this curve related to this and this this is a straight line this is a parabola this is a degree 4 curve it's not clear what is the connection but still we will proceed with convolution why because i have some nice results one of the most important results beautiful results about convolution is what you see on your screen laplace transform of ft into laplace transform of gt f and g are two functions laplace transform of ft into laplace transform of gt is laplace transform of f star g so you see here product of two functions if i take laplace it is not laplace of laplace of product is not product of laplace but if i want to make it look like a product it is the convolution which i have to take that means l of it is not f into g is not l of f into l of g it's like derivative there are Leibniz rule is there derivative of f into g is not derivative of f into derivative of g integral of f into g is not integral of f into integral of g instead it has a separate formula integration by parts and um, derivative by uh, Leibniz rule is there this is somewhat like that Laplace transform of f star g is l of f into l of g this is a very important result very useful result not very important it's very useful i'll show you the usefulness of it uh, proof is not there in your syllabus let me skip that thankfully you don't need to know that uh, what is there in your syllabus and sort of definite question in the final exam is verification of convolution theorem for certain easy functions that is what you need to know we will verify this that this is true we won't prove this but we will verify that convolution theorem is true for some easy functions so let us start with this verify convolution theorem for functions ft equal to t and gt equal to et e power t that means you verify this ft equal to t gt equal to e power t so you find laplace of this find laplace of this then find f star g and then find its laplace these are all these things are what we will plan to we plan to do here so let us go step wise ft find laplace of t i know that one by a squared comes straight from the uh, uh, table of laplace transforms 
What is Laplace of GT? That is Laplace of ET. Laplace of E power T is 1 by S minus 1. Laplace of E power AT is 1 by S minus A. A is 1 here. So I have Laplace of F to be equal to 1 by S square. Laplace of E power T to be uh, Laplace of G, which is Laplace of E power T is 1 by S minus 1. So the product is L of FT into L of GT is 1 by S square into S minus 1. The theorem says the product is L of F star G. So that means now I have to find F star G. So this is the one side, left hand side I have found. Now I have to find the right hand side. Right hand side is F, Laplace of F star G. First let me find what is F star G. F star G by definition is F of T minus U into G U integral between 0 to T. So now F of T minus U means which t minus u because f of t is t, f of the identity function in this case. So f of t is t. So f of t minus u is t minus u. That's what I have written here. G of u is nothing but e power u because g of t is e power t. So g of u is e power u. So I have to integrate this t power my t minus u into e power u du between this limit 0 and t. Uh, please you do it at home. t is to be treated as sort of constant. You will see you will get it to be minus t plus e power t minus 1. You can use integration by parts. Or you can break it up into two parts and then use integration by parts. Whatever you want, you can do. And you substitute the limits, you will get this. I will not write the details of this. I will not spend time on telling you details of how to integrate this because you have done this before. So this will be equal to this. What's the big deal? Uh, big deal is that now I know F star G. If I convolve F and G, this is the function I will get. I will find its Laplace transform. Its Laplace transform is Laplace of F star G is Laplace of E power T minus T minus 1. That's what this is. Laplace of E power T is 1 by S minus 1. Laplace of T is 1 by S square. Laplace of 1 is 1 by S. You combine these two, these three. So uh, LCM of the denominator is S square into S minus 1 and write all those things S square minus S minus 1 minus S into S minus 1, etc. I write it. Uh, <coughs> yeah, you simplify this you will get this 1 by s square into s minus 1. I will not again waste my time on that, but I'm sure you can do this. So then what has happened is Laplace of f star g is this, Laplace of f into Laplace of g is this, and you see both of them are equal. This and this are equal, which means I have verified convolution theorem for these two functions. So whenever I want to verify convolution theorem for two of the given functions, I, what I do, I find Laplace of each of the functions, then I find convolution of the two and find its Laplace, show that what I found before and what I found now, they are equal. This is how you verify convolution theorem for functions. I hope that is clear. If you want, you can have a look at the whole slide once. f of t is given, g of t is given. You are asked to verify convolution theorem for these two functions. So what one does is finds Laplace transform of each of these functions and find the convolution and its Laplace transform. Show that these, this product of Laplace of each of the functions and Laplace of the convolution are the same. That's what we have done here. So you could be asked more complicated functions. This was very, very simple. T and E power T. But method is the same. Here is another question. Use convolution theorem to prove Laplace of integral of E power minus U sine T minus U du is this. 1 by S plus 1 into S square plus 1. Okay. How do I do this? Of course, there are several ways of doing this. Firstly, uh, what I find it easiest is you watch this. This is, I can write right hand side as product of two factors. One is 1 by s plus 1, another is 1 by s square plus 1. This thing is product of 1 by s plus 1 and 1 by s square plus 1. And each of the factors, that is 1 by s plus 1 and 1 by s square plus 1, both are Laplace of some easy functions, some standard functions. For example, of what function is, that means you find inverse Laplace in your mind. Mentally you find, what is the inverse Laplace of 1 by s plus 1? It is e power minus t. What is the inverse Laplace of s square plus 1? It is sine t. So 
what I do is I look for those two functions whose Laplaces are this and this. So that means I'll take ft as sin t and gt as e power minus t. Sin t because Laplace of sin t is 1 by s square plus 1. gt I'll take it to be e power minus t because Laplace of gt e power minus t is 1 by s plus 1. That is how I thought of these two. Of course, you can directly look here also. Uh, so Laplace of ft is this. That's what I was telling you. Laplace of gt is this. That's what I told you. Now, convolution theorem says Laplace of f star g is Laplace of f into Laplace of g. That means this into this is Laplace of convolution of these two. So, but then Laplace of convolution of f star g, f and g is <coughs> f of t minus u into uh, g of u, whole thing integrated from 0 to t. So, that's precisely what is given in the left hand side here. So, the upshot of this is I could find Laplace of this horrible looking integral without any integration. I didn't have to do integration. I didn't have to do anything. I had to just observe that this is product of Laplace of two standard functions. That's all I needed to do. That's the power of convolution theory. That's why one says convolution is a very important operation on functions. Because, you know, imagine trying to find Laplace of this function. If you want to find Laplace of this, you have to first evaluate this integral and then find Laplace of that. But I didn't have to do any of that. So it converted basically an uh, integral problem into an algebraic problem. Just writing it as product of two functions whose Laplace transforms give me this function. That's what it is. So go through this carefully. I know it's a bit confusing, but go through it carefully. You'll be able to understand. Let us see. Ah, many times uh, inverse Laplace and convolution. So uh, you see this, what does this statement say is what is the statement? Ah, here is the statement. If you take Laplace inverse of the statement of convolution theorem is this, that Laplace of ft into Laplace of gt is Laplace of f star g. Now if you take Laplace inver inverse Laplace of the whole thing, then I'll get inverse Laplace of L of ft into L of gt is f star g. So if I want to find convolution also, I can use inverse Laplace. That's what I'll, I'll show you an example. Maybe that may be better. So convolution theorem is restated as L inverse Laplace of capital Fs into capital Js. That means this is Laplace and so on of ft. This is Laplace and so on of gt. Inverse Laplace of Fs into Gs is nothing but f star g because l of f star g is this that's what convolution theorem says l of this is what is inside the bracket here but now i'll just take inverse laplace on both sides i'll get inverse laplace of fs into gs is equal to l inverse of l of f star g which is same as f star g f star g means this uh, let's see i know it's too abstract and too you know it's boring so let us see how we can use this let us Try to do that. How to use this uh, inverse convolution theorem? Uh, one minute. Let me check this. Yeah. How to use this? So let us find inverse Laplace transform of this function. This function, of course, you know how to do it. 1 by s into s square plus a square. You can use your partial fractions, but it's going to be pretty long. 1 by a by s plus bs plus c divided by excuse me a square plus a square so one can do this kind of thing but i'll show you an easier way using convolution theorem so first step is whatever i told before is to recognize that this given expression is product of Laplace transform of two functions. So you see one, this I can write it as 1 by s into 1 by s square plus s square. And 1 by s, I can easily find inverse Laplace transform. 1 by s square plus s square, I can easily find inverse Laplace transform. That means I have recognized this expression as product of two functions such that each of those factors is Laplace transform of some function. 
So here 1 by s into 1 by s square plus a square is what I have written and 1 by s is Laplace of 1 and 1 by s square plus a square is Laplace of 1 by a sin a t because Laplace of sin a t is a by s square plus a square. So I'll have to pull out one factor of a so I divide by a. Uh, this kind of thing you have done. This means what, this, what does this mean? If I write capital F of s as 1 by s, capital F s means Laplace of small f. I'm trying to look for small f. So I, I told you, I have written this as product of two Laplace transforms in product of two functions whose Laplace transforms I can easily find. Sorry, sorry. Product of Laplace transform of two functions. So uh, fs is 1 by s, gs is 1 by s square plus a square. Capital fs is 1 by s means what are the inverse Laplace? That means how do I find small f? It is p. That's what, uh, sorry, it is 1. That is what I have written already here. And what is small g? If I know, oh, I am not written. This is typo. So typo g s is equal to, is equal to, must be there, is equal to this. So g s is 1 by s square plus a square. Then f t is 1 and g t is 1 by a sine a t. That's what I just showed you here. So f and g I know. If I know f and g, small f and small g I know. Because this I recognized it as product of Laplace transforms of two functions. So my convolution theorem stated L inverse of f capital F capital G is f star G. So now here L inverse of this whole thing inverse Laplace is L inverse of F s where capital F is this capital G is this. But then this is equal to f star g by convolution theorem. What is the f? Here it is. f is 1 and g is this. So you find out actually this integral. Integral of 0 to t, f t minus u, g t. f t minus u means it is 1 because f t is 1 for all. It's a constant function. So this is 1. And g t is 1 by a sin a t. 1 by a is a constant. g u will become. So this is not g t. This is sorry. Small, I'm sorry. Small typos. So this is u this is not, and du is what I should be writing. This is the definition of uh, uh, convolution. So f star g means f of t minus u into gu du. So this is 1. So gu means 1 by a sin at. So you pull out 1 by a and sin at if you integrate you will get cos at. Uh, by a so that they become a square and then the integral remits between 0 and t so cos 0 is 1 and cos uh, if you put t itself it's minus cos 8 because it's ulta means t comes first and then 0 and there is a minus also in between so because integral of sin a t is minus cos a t so you get this this is the expression this is correct so upshot is I have found inverse Laplace of this with almost no effort I didn't have to spend a single paisa of work. All I have to do is recognize this as product of two Laplace transform of two functions. That is the thing. Those functions were also easy to see. You take two functions, you take both their Laplace transforms, their product turns out to be what is given. So then it's very easy to find inverse Laplace if you know how to integrate. Now you don't need to know rational functions and those kind of things, partial functions, you cannot, you don't have to do. Of course, you can do like that also. That's an algebraic way of doing. But in this case, this integration is so easy that I will not bother about doing that. That's what I'm trying to explain. So to find inverse Laplace transform of, so normally in the exam, they'll ask, find inverse Laplace transform of this using convolution theorem. Then immediately you must see, I can recognize this expression as product of Laplace transform of two functions. So which are the two functions 1 and 1 by a sin a t and then use convolution theorem directly you will get the answer. So this also similar thing find inverse Laplace transform of a s divided by s square plus a square whole square. So I want to write this as product of two guys both of which are Laplace transform of standard functions very easy a by s square plus a square into s by s square plus a square. 
that's what I do. Capital FS is A by S square plus A square and capital G is GS is S by S square plus S square. Then capital F into capital G is what I have got, whose inverse Laplace I have to find. Now, then what is small f? Very easy to see that. Then small f is sin 80 and small g is cos 80 because um, uh, Laplace transform of sin 80 is a by s square plus a square. Laplace transform of cos 80 is s by s square plus a square. This, I know it from standard uh, uh, table of Laplace transforms. So that is what you need to recognize. That I can recognize this as product of two functions, both of which are Laplace transform of some easy function. So sin 80, ft is sin 80, gt is cos 80. Then Laplace transform of sin 80 is this. Laplace transform of cos 80 is this. This and their product is what, whose inverse Laplace I want to find. So Laplace inverse of this is Laplace inverse of this, which is equal to by convolution theorem f star g. Now f is this, g is this. Write down what is f star g. That means f star g is f of t minus u. That means sine of a into t, sine of a times t minus u into g of u. g of u is cos a u du. So I have to integrate this sine of a t minus u into cos of a u. So how do I do this? This formula I know sine a cos b is sine of a plus half sine of a plus b plus sine of a minus b. So I carry that out. This formula you should know. So how do you integrate sine a cos b? So this is how you sine of a plus b plus sine of a minus b whole by 2. So that's what I have done here. So this integral is same as this integral. But this integral means here already u, uh, u and u get cancelled. I get sine 80 and here <coughs> I'll get sine 80 uh, and here I'll get sine a t minus 2 u. So you integrate this. t is constant here in the sense I can pull out t because the integration with respect to u. You carry out this integration. It's pretty easy. I have done that here. So I will not write waste time, spend time on giving you how to integrate this because this is sine of something. This is sine of something. So sine of something integral is minus cos of something divided by whatever that something is, etc, etc. And then put the limits t equal to u equal to 0 and u equal to t. Subtract one from the other, you will get 1 by 2 t sin a t. Which means inverse Laplace of this without doing any partial fractions or any deep thing, I could very easy integration, I could find inverse Laplace of this. This is a standard kind of question which they ask. Like this, there will be many more uh, questions where you have to basically recognize given function as product of two uh, Laplace transform of two functions. I think I'll uh, stop here for time being and then again continue after some time. In the next lecture, we'll study more of uh, inverse Laplace uh, convolution theorem and their stories.